Okay, so we have our main cat software, which is called Tuka Cat. Tuka Cat consists of Tuka Design and Tuka Mark. Tuka Design is for pattern making and grading, and Tuka Mark is for marker making. So people use that for costing or production. Okay. And then um, this is the Tuka 3D, which will you guys will learn down the line. This is an actual 3D program. And then we also have what we call Tuka DE Visualizer. Okay, from the 3D, you can generate the 3D garment. And then uh, we have a subscription for the DE where you could actually uh, bring in the 3D garment and then do the colorways or prints and visualization. That's what the DE Visualizer is for. So the 3D is the actual full system. But um, it's a, it requires a very hard, uh, strong hardware, right? Uh, DE is just for graphic and visualization. So in the 3D system, you're actually stitching up the garment and um, checking the fit, and then you could do the colorways, and then you could output the renderings for videos and pictures, etc. So. Um, this is uh, we don't want everybody tied up with the system so we for graphics users we use the to do the colorways and other stuff so and uh, basically this one's a uh, 29 dollars a month subscription so you could have like five people one person doing the 3d i'll put the 3d garment and then you could bring in the de and do multiple colorways etc okay but today's training is going to be focused on the pattern uh, to get design software. Okay, uh, we're Windows-based system, so basically, when you left-click, you select thing. Okay, uh, I'm sure all of you guys use computers, but would you, I like to just go over the basics. Okay, uh, if you right mouse click, you get different options. Okay. So if you right mouse click on the computer, you get different options. Right mouse on the desktop, you get different options. If you right mouse click on a program or a file, you get different options. In the taskbar, if you right mouse, you get different options also. Okay. So same thing in our software. So I'm going to start the Tuka Design software. Uh, before I do that, when we install the software, we have uh, in the C drive uh, a folder called Tuka Data. Okay. In the Tuka data folder, we have some examples. Um, we have some basic blocks and examples for people to practice with. So if you come here, if I come to the styles, it's kind of categorized by a man, woman, uh, kids, or different uh, industry like a furniture company, etc. Um, so if you come to the styles, women's tops, okay. So these are our file types, TUD. TU for Tuka and D for design. Okay. So you'll have a .tud system. Okay. Um, if I come here, um, I have multiple software installed right now. Um, I guess I need to change it. But uh, if you check your system, you'll see like a preview of the. Um, It'll show you an image instead of the actual file. Give me a second. Let me see if I can repair this. If you change the view to large, it should show you the actual image. Uh, I guess I think so. Sorry, do we have my Yeah, okay. Let me, I forgot to install mine, so. Let me 
I saw it correctly on my system. Make sure we all can see it. Okay. Uh, to the data examples, uh, humans, left or top. So basically, uh, it should show you this uh, either if you have an image loaded, you could do an image or um, you'll take a picture of the pattern. Okay. And then if you hover over the um, file, it'll tell you the author who saved the last. Okay. Uh, it'll tell you the size range and the number of pieces without even having to open up the file. Okay. Now, certain systems are piece-based systems. Certain systems are uh, model-based system. We're a model-based system, um, meaning one file contains all each pattern pieces you require. Piece-based system like Gerber, you need you select the, the number of pieces and then you create a model. I believe Stylecam is also a piece-based mm -hmm. system. And you have different individual pieces. You have to create a model and do it that way. Um, so our main files are TUD, which is the pattern files. Okay. Let me go to the details. So, and then, uh, the second file type is our marker files, which is TUM. Okay. So TUM, T, dot TUM is our marker file types. Okay. And again, if I come here, change, you can see the things. Okay. So those are our two main files. Okay. Now, when you get to the 3D, 3D will have a lot of different files. But once we get to the 3D training, you'll learn about those types. Okay. Okay. Let me start to the design. Um, now, I have my icons a little bit larger. If you want to change it, come to view menu, two bars, and then customize, and you could en enable the large buttons. Okay. Now, let's kind of go over the layout. Okay. Uh, we have our menus up here, and we have, uh, I believe, nine two bars. It's been a while since I trained. <laughs> So each two bar is categorized, okay? So we have our standard two bar, we have our piece two bar here, we have our segment two bar, okay? This is internal two bar. This is called darts and pleats, okay? This one is our view two bar, okay? This is our edit two bar. And 50% of your pattern making changes will come from the edit two bar. Okay, this is our rotate two bar. And this is our toolkit. We call it toolkit. It's like a pattern maker's toolbox, right? You have scissors, rulers, pencils, etc. So we like to call it our toolkit. Okay. Now, if we come here, okay, I don't know if you can see this lines here. Okay, he also subcategorizes. Okay, so this is a rectangle, which is create a rectangle piece, circle, a polygon shape, a full or circular shape. Okay, so now create your new pieces. This is a set half, delete half. Okay, so it's dealing with mirror pieces. Okay? And if you look here, let me actually just make a piece so you could kind of see it. Um, so this, the sewing machine is for seam allowances. You're adding, deleting, changing the values, et cetera. Okay? Now, when you don't have any piece, okay? So if I delete piece from the style, okay? Uh, most of the tools are grayed out, okay? So when you actually have something to work with or you have a pencil to draft with, if you want to start drawing it. Okay? Now, if you hover over the tool, it gives you the tool name, okay? Now, if it has a keyboard shortcut, it'll be in the parentheses. So if you want to start a new, it'll be control N. So whatever tools you use the most, you're going to start memorizing the shortcut for it, right? It's in there. Also, under the help menu, hotkeys, 
We have, this is six pages. You will not need to remember all six pages, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, we use, try to use almost every combination of uh, possible combination we have, okay? But you just use whatever you use the most, okay? Now, if you hover over a tool, on the bottom, it gives you a description, okay, of what the tool does. So if you see the bottom left corner, this is our status bar, okay? So in the status bar, you hover over it, it rotate piece, uh, gray line, or in channels, it kind of gives you a brief description, okay? Now, when you actually try to use a tool, like maybe uh, move parallel, which requires multiple steps, okay? Then on the bottom right corner, it says select first point on segment and go clockwise. I don't know if you guys could see it from there. It gives you the steps. So you just follow the steps. So when I click here and then it says click on the end of the point. So that's the last point. And then select any point and drag and you can move it, right? So, okay. So this gives you the steps here, okay? We also have what we call built-in video help, okay? So this is our video help. When you click on this tool, you could say, I forgot how to use this tool, the scissors cut tool, right? So when you click on it. Use the cutting tool to draft and cut from existing sheets. So the video explains how to use the tools, right? If you like to read, we have the context help. I don't see anyone really using the context help. So it's written down and you can uh, read the directions, okay? Um, usually we, first time users, we all emphasize to watch the get started video under the help menu. It's about three to five minutes long, I believe, okay? Hello and welcome to Chukatech's Chuki Design. And then you could continue and each tool is about one to two minutes long, the videos are. To generate a pattern for a tree. Now, um, some of the videos are old, but it gives you the basis of how the system works and how the tools and functions work. Okay? Um, now, when we have a major release, that'll be under the what's new section. Okay, this, we haven't made videos for this, but basically uh, it gives you what the new features are, okay? Cloud login, uh, print, okay? To the design section. We have a virtual digitizer. If uh, instead of buying an expensive digitizer, which is like $5,000, right? Um, you could buy a, like a TV and then you can digitize using the virtual digitizer. Okay, the TV nowadays is like 55 inches, what's five, six hundred dollars. So, okay, new quality enhancements. Okay, so all this um, every year on a major release, uh, it will be what's new. Okay, we have some exciting things. It's already 2021, but we usually release it later, um, maybe next month or something. We have some new things going on for that. So, any questions where to look for the help if um, no, nothing so far yeah. okay so on the left side this is your piece bar okay the gray area and then this is your work area okay as I was mentioning earlier uh, when you double click or um, when you click, you're selecting, right? If you double click in, you're opening, okay? So when you have a folder, you double click, you're opening up that information. So same thing in our system, okay? So if I have another piece, I click to select, okay? Now, if I need a piece information, you double click inside the piece and you get the piece info, okay? So um, here you can name the piece if it's a front, back, and whatever description, maybe cut to material, how many pieces is required. And uh, if, if it's two pieces, then is it a left and a right? So you need to set the opposite, okay? Is it one-way fabric, two-way fabric? Yeah. 
if you double click on a point, you get the point information. Okay, so anything you, we, if you have a drill hole or you have a notches or you have some internal lines, style lines, etc. If you double click on it, you get the information for that object. Okay. Now, if you right mouse click, depending on you, where you right mouse, you get different options also. So if I right mouse inside a piece, I get some of different options. If right mouse click on the work area, I would get different options. If right mouse on the point, I get different options. Right mouse on the piece bar, you get different options. So it's like exactly like how Windows operates. So when you actually look at a pattern, what is really a pattern? For me, a pattern is just straight lines and curved lines. And you're going by measurements, right? Okay. So basically, uh, in the CAD system, is um, there's also in the different different CAD systems like Gerber, they like to think they're line based system. And then uh, we in our system we're a point based system. But every cast system is actually point based. It's just uh, they're hiding the points and making it seem like it's a line based system. Okay. So when you double click on a point, okay, basically um, you have two main attributes which uh, in that combination could create four. Okay. So we have grading and curve. Okay. So when you say graded, so the first type is grading, and then if you check mark the curve, that becomes a graded curve point. So it's curving around that point, okay? That's how you're creating the shape. Okay? If you uncheck the grading, that's the third type, which is just a curve point, okay? Anything between grade points, we call it intermediate points, okay? And if you uncheck the curve, then it becomes a non-grading, non-curve point. Now, the reason people call it grade point is this is where you actually use to grade different sizes. I don't know if you guys know about grading. Mm -hmm. If you went to fashion school, I'm pretty sure you took it. You took in some grading courses, right? So every corner point should be a grade point. Okay, you have your high point, uh, shoulder point, your high point, uh, shoulder armor point, your armor side point, or center neck point, etc. So usually those are all grading points, okay? And if you actually look, grade points, it's kind of hard to tell from the screen unless you're really looking at it, but grade points have a bigger square shape than a non-grade point, okay? Okay, so you could double click and you could change that. Yeah. So basically, um, a pattern piece uh, in the system we call an external contour. Okay, and external contours require at least three points. Okay, so if I select this point and say delete. Okay, it uh, deleted that point, so you have to redraw the line and you get like a triangle shape, okay? Now, if I delete this point, as mentioned, you require at least three points, okay? Because it has to be a closed contour, okay? Um, closed means it has to be locked up. Now, in certain systems like Electra, uh, you could draft the lines, Okay, but it, it doesn't have to be closed in Electra, but in the later, you, st you still have to close it some way, okay? Um, all pattern pieces should be a closed contour, okay? Now, if, see the draft tool, you have a pencil. So if I was to draw a line in here, okay, you could draw style lines, pockets, etc. Internal lines require to be two points because you have a first and last point. You could have more points, okay? And, and it doesn't require it to be um, a closed contour. So um, I don't know if you guys ever used Electra or something like that. Basically, it's like a big square. Within that square, you're drawing the lines, style lines, etc. And that's how Electra works is 
bound by that in the visual pieces and like there's a piece based system also so okay okay any questions with point types basically that's how you control your curve shapes and um, straight lines okay and delete the space Okay. Now, some people in the uh, when they start using the system, they you use maybe an average about thirty five to fifty percent of the tools. Okay, if you learn more of the tools, all the features, um, you'll be faster at it, of course. Okay, and it'll make your job much easier. Next thing you need to know is uh, when you're placing points or lines or notches along the contour, uh, we'd like to go by precise measurements. So if you look here in this app point dialog, you have previous and next, okay? Let me close that for a second. If you do control K, you could see the grade point numbers, okay? So control K is something you should memorize in the system. So when I click on the line between two and three, okay, I had this previous and next. Also here, you could create what type of point you want. Okay. So from two, that would be my previous. Computers are always thinking clockwise direction, okay? So from here, where I click, it's saying it's 9.227, and from here to my next point will be 15.273. So if you want to be precisely three inches away from next, you could say three inches, say okay, and it'll make me a point there. Um, now, if I click on the bottom line here, between four and one, what's my previous and what's my next? So previous will be number four, okay? And next will be number one, okay? So if I say three inches from previous, say, that's where my x is going and proportion is percentage of the line so if this line you should also memorize this f8 will show you your measurements between grade point to grade point so if i want it in the middle if i type in 0.5 okay say okay then you'll divide it in half so every tool kind of does each function. So add point will add you a point. Move point allows you to pick up a point and move it, okay? You have to remember points for the shape, right? So if I ramus click here and say delete, it loses that shape. Now, if I'm trying to alter this uh, line with the move point, right? When I click here, it'll add me a point first because there's no point to hold the shape. So if I click here, bring it down, it creates a point and you can move that point, okay? If you click on an existing point, you're moving that point. If you click and move, then it has to first add you a point because points hold the shape, okay? Now, like Illustrator, if you hold shift, click on it, it'll make you a curve point. Okay, so at the time of creation, you hold down the sh uh, shift key, and when you click on it, it'll make you a curve point. Okay. So it's very simple system, okay? We don't try to make it complicated. Okay. Now, there's a lot of uh, different ways of doing stuff, okay? Um, let me delete this piece, okay? So here, Let's say I need to draft a map or something, and we made it much easier. So if I come here and label this as back first, okay. And uh, maybe I will say cut to material self, and I will say to up and down, apply, okay. So uh, this is actually a green table. I'm going to close that. Okay. So, so basically, if you're designers or tech tech designers, you go by points of measure, right? So from here, if this is my shorter line, I could say 
was my uh, neck to shoulder drop, which is typically, um, I'm gonna draft that line. So I'm gonna say create pillow or C, okay? And usually that's about one inch, okay? From the high point shoulder line. And then across back is about five and a half inches. So I'll mark that, okay? Uh, give me a second. I sure I need to come here make sure my draft move setup is always connected okay so let me do that again so i'm gonna do one inch for my uh shorter drop one inch okay and then five and a half for my across back okay and uh, about 10 inches for chest and then uh, 14 and a half for my uh, waist okay now here i this is where I, my neck width so i'm going to do this function called segment length control enter okay so this length is 10 inches and i want my neck opening so from center to whatever is about three and a half. So I'm going to say 3.5. And then um, I have different options on how to make this 10 inches be three and a half inches. Okay. So in this case, I need to bring it down. And this is my first point. So I'm going to say first vertical and say apply. And it drops down here. Okay. Now this is my across shoulder. So let me close that. I can select this line. Control enter is the shortcut for the segment dialog. And I can say seven and a half inches. And again, this is first internal point. Say okay. So that'd be seven and a half inches. And then maybe seven inches for across back. Say okay. Chest is 10 inches. And then maybe for the waist, I could change this to be nine and a half. Say okay. And then I could just change this to be a curve point. Okay, change this to be a greater curve point. Okay, and change this to be a greater curve point. Okay, and then you're gonna shape. So I could select here and shape my arm hole. Okay, and I could come here and shape my neck. Okay, so. And then if you need your waist, whatever. So some people go by exact measurements and you could draft a pattern relatively easily. Okay. If you need a sleeve, um, sleeve and then the bicep, maybe nine inches or something like that. Okay, so I could come here and label this a sleeve. Okay, cut two. If there are self, two up and down. Okay, so usually from here to here, I need to set up my um, cap. Usually it's uh, five and a half inches. So I could come here. I could say plus 5.5 .5 also. Okay, and then I need to move this point this way. So I'm going to say first horizontal, apply. So it becomes 23 something. I could come here. I could mark my elbow if you need an elbow, but for this, I'm not going to do that. I could come here, control enter. Okay. I could come here and say four and a half for my hem, and I need to move second vertical down. Okay. And here I need to divide this cap so I could shape my uh, sleeve cap. Okay. So I could add two points, or I could say um, slip contour segment. I could say point on the contour. I need three equal distance. Say OK. I need to change this point type. So I select the lines and then press enter, make it the curve. And then it's just a matter of now shaping my sleeve cap. And then if you want to move it by precise measurements, you could do that, or you could do it by eye. So, okay. You could set half. Okay. 
You could grab the SEMA loss tool and double click and say 0.375. Okay. 0.375. From here, change the temp to maybe one inch or half an inch or whatever you need. Okay. And in the system, if um, we have this thing called measurements. Okay, I'm just giving you a preview of what you could do, so don't worry. If you go and learn it all, so if you come here and um, label this as, uh, let's go from the top or bottom. Okay, um, so if I come here and I label this as zero one, when you create the measurement chart, you list it by alphabetical order or numerical order. So if you have a tech pack or a spec sheet, you want to follow that exact order, you just put input by number first. And if it's an Excel or something you can copy, you can select copy and put it in here. So if you say across back, okay. And if I were to say report measurements, it'll tell you across back is 15 inches. Okay. If you come here, oh, oops, this is across shorter, not back. Okay. And this will be considered across back, so zero two across back. And uh, whatever you use, you'll remember in the fill drop down. Okay. If you need to delete this fill, you can right mouse click and say delete those. So yeah, say okay. Anyways, uh, this will be zero two across back. Say okay. Usually, chest measurements one is below the actual line, but I'm just going to call it chest. Okay. And then zero four waist. Now, on a point, I have to label this one, and then it'll measure up to the next grade point. So right now I don't have any points here. If I label one, it'll measure up to two because it's thinking clockwise direction, right? So this one actually requires a special command, okay? So this will be one, two, three, four, five, zero, five, M, right? And we need to say M slash M to measure on a point, okay? Now, if I come here, I have my measurement 15, 14, 20, 19, and 20. Okay. Because uh, this peak point is two, that's why the actual length is seven and a half is multiplied by, by two, okay? Now, if you have a greater size, you'll do your specking also, okay? So if I come here, grading sizes, and then let's, uh, Go with an extra small, extra small, Oops. small, medium, large, extra large, and my base size is medium. I select that, and let me do a rough grading. So if I come here and then say uh one inch okay i could copy this control v there and then y if i do half an inch 0.5 or minus 0.5 i could copy here and so i'm going to select control c copy and then i'm going to come here to here and do control v okay and then this one, I'm gonna have to just copy this and then paste the X grading. Okay, and then come here, copy that, and paste the X grading. Where's my X grading? Okay, copy that, select this point, paste the X grading. Copy this and paste the X grading. Oops. Okay, 
Uh, it's because I didn't grade this point yet, that's why. Okay, uh, and then um, it needs to be half Y grade, so I could come here and say half. And I could come here, right mouse, select this point, and then instead of half an inch, half Y grading. So I just do that. And let me see. Okay. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake with the X grading here, so let me delete the X value. I'm not a grader, so. <laughs> I know how to grade, but it's just a mere expert grader. Okay. And let me see, this technically should be a quarter inch here. Okay, anyways, um, if you grade it correctly, if you come with the measurements and then if you uncheck here then it'll tell you your x and y values side chart and all this could be exported out to be excel so you start with your pattern part right so if you level your pieces let me save this style and call. Okay. if you have an image for the garment you could also attach a preview so if you say attach preview Take current is taking the work area, or if you actually have an image, you can load an image. So let me see examples, images, video pics, maybe it's the shirt, say okay, and you can create an Excel sheet, print descriptions, and let me restore. You could change the headings here. So if uh, you don't want this special headings, but you, you need something else, you could print trade information, remarks, etc., etc. Create the Excel for pattern color. Okay, let me just put this on the desktop. Okay. So you have your pattern color. I'm going to just go ahead and move sheet, save this here. Come here to report measurements. If you click here, you can uh, do all in the Excel. Okay. So if you say append to existing file, it'll keep on adding the sheets. So you could do that. Okay, so you have your pattern color, right? It tells you piece, but here it has an image, your sketch, and your trim information and the measurements it gives you details by size if it's braided small medium large extra large okay come here and then if you uncheck this you can have a size chart a pen okay so so basically we call this like a mini plm because um it allows you to uh, label everything detail measurements okay. we can relabel this as slide chart okay. 